Hey guys, and welcome back to How to Make Elements from Household Materials. Now, today's element is going to be boron. Now, borax is a compound of boron, which you can commonly buy at a store. Uh, it can be used as laundry detergent or several different other things. Uh, but the compound here is sodium tetraborate, which uh, we're going to be turning into elemental boron. But first, we're going to need to make boric acid. Um, so, to do so, we're going to need some hydrochloric acid, which can be sold as muriatic acid, um, at Home Depot or something, and um, of course b boron or borax, and then water. So first, we need to create a saturated solution of uh, borax in the water. This and make sure everything is dissolved. This will just ensure that if any boric acid is precipitated out when we originally uh, put the hydrochloric acid into the uh, solution, um, that there will be no contamination. Because if you have crystals of borax and then you add in the hydrochloric acid and get boric acid, you would have a, a contaminated solution, which would not be good for your end product. So we're just going to add a uh, fair amount of borax to our solution and dissolve it so it's crystal clear. Now, it doesn't really matter how much you add, just so that it's a fairly saturated solution. So meet you back once that's done. Okay, so after dissolving everything, you can see that our solution is quite clear, um, which is exactly what you need. So now we're going to need to add in this hydrochloric acid. So this is muriatic acid, which as I said, you can probably buy at Home Depot or something. And um, this is just about 30% hydrochloric acid. So we're going to be adding a bit of this to our solution here. Probably about doubling its volume or so. It doesn't need to be exact, but um, yeah, about that. So uh, now we're just going to let it sit for a while. I'll probably stir this up. And we're going to stick it in the freezer for probably about half an hour to an hour. Now this will uh, make the solution much colder, and boric acid is not very soluble in a colder solution. So we should be able to precipitate out crystals of pure boric acid. So we'll be back once that's done. Okay, so despite this glass being very frosty after being in the freezer, you can see a layer of precipitant at the bottom. And this is our boric acid. So, it doesn't really have to be super pure because we are going to be heating it up and decomposing it into boron oxide. So, we're just going to decant this off. So, we'll just take a separate jar and carefully pour off all the liquid, leaving behind all of our nice um, boric acid crystals, which you can see at the bottom there. Um, so anyhow, I'm going to scrape that out, and um, I might rinse it a couple times, but I'll probably just um, dry it out, and then I'll be back for the part where we decompose it into boron, boron oxide. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so here is all of our boric acid, and it's fairly dry. It's still a bit moist, but um, I put it on some filter paper and set it out for a bit uh, so that most of the water evaporated. Um, so anyhow, we're left with this, and I've just put it on this tin can. Uh, the lid of a tin can, which I've already uh, heated up uh, very hot with a blowtorch to remove any of the coatings they put on the tin can. So um, this steel lid is what we're going to be using to heat up our bo uh, boric acid. Now boric acid has several um, hydrogen oxygen bonds associated with it, um, but as an excess of oxygen, um, if you're thinking in terms of making water, which is H2O. So anyhow, when we heat this up, it's actually going to decompose and give off water in the form of steam because it's going to be very hot, leaving us with boric oxide, which contains three oxygens around a boron molecule. So this boron oxide is what we're going to be reducing with um, magnesium to produce pure boron metal. Uh, well, it's actually a metalloid. It's not a metal. Um, sorry. Uh, but anyhow, uh, point being, first we have to heat this up. So we're going to... Um, Instead of using a blowtorch or something, I've actually decided to try to put it on my stove um, in my home and just turn on the stove to max temperature. This should get hot enough and I'm hoping it'll work, and because we're only releasing water vapor, nothing toxic should be produced and this should be okay to do uh, inside instead of outside. Although, if my burner doesn't get hot enough, we will have to go outside and use a blowtorch to heat this up. So anyhow, I'm going to go set up the burner and I'll be back once that's done. Okay, so you can see after just like 5 minutes on the heat, it's really bubbling and this is definitely working. So we're just going to let this keep running on the stove until um, if there's no more bubbling. And when there's no more bubbling, then we can stop and take it off the heat. So I'll be back then. Okay, so once the reaction was completed, I just let it cool and the whole gooey mass seemed to kind of pop off um, if I pushed the, kind of bent the tin can. 
Now, the uh, tin can did leave a residue on the uh, boron oxide, um, but that's okay because it's just steel. And we're going to be treating everything with hydrochloric acid after, which will dissolve the steel. So um, that is why I use that opposed to other things such as a clay flower pot or something, because uh, clay is not soluble in hydrochloric acid, so we'd have a contamination there. Anyhow, so once you have all your chunks, I've just taken it into a dart, and you're going to shake it up quite a bit with some marbles in it or something, or some other sort of weight. Uh, even small rocks would work, um, but they have to be rather large uh, rocks so you can pull them out afterwards, about the size of marbles. Anyhow, this will just crush it up into a finer powder, because we're going to be reacting this with magnesium. Now, the reaction will also work with aluminum powder, except that aluminum uh, and it's well, aluminum soluble in hydrochloric acid, but aluminum oxide is not which doesn't really help our scenario for separating the pure boron afterwards. So we actually have to use magnesium. Um, and that's one of the few options that we actually have to make a simple separation for us. So I do have some magnesium ribbon, which I bought online, um, but magnesium is actually pretty difficult to come by. Apparently you can get it in some uh, flint and steel fire lighters. And um, in a, f a future video, I will be trying to extract uh, magnesium from household materials. Uh, so look for that in the future. But whatever way you have magnesium, you're going to need uh, either some fine granules or a powder. Because I only have magnes uh, magnesium ribbon from um, eBay, I'm going to be chopping it up into very teeny pieces with a pair of scissors. Now magnesium ribbon is extremely cheap and a whole 70 foot roll of it was only um, a buck fifty on eBay. So you can buy it for cheap and it's definitely worth it. So yeah, I'm going to go get that ready. and. For however much weight you have of um, boron oxide powder, you're going to need about twice the magnesium powder plus a bit extra. Um, and then we also want to have an excess because um, uh, we want everything to react. And then the magnesium will be able to dissolve in the hydrochloric acid. So anyhow, I'll be back once this is powderized and I have some magnesium little uh, clippings chopped up. So I'll meet you back in a moment. Okay, so we have the boron oxide, which is not super fine, but it's crushed up a bit tinier. I uh, mixed in with our magnesium, well, chunks, I guess, because I couldn't really get it into a fine powder. Um, now, if you do have magnesium powder, definitely use that because it's gonna be so much more useful. And um, so I had two grams of boron oxide, so I actually doubled the amount of um, uh, magnesium ribbon, uh, uh, little clipping things, I actually have 4 grams of that, just an excess because I don't know if everything's going to properly react. Now if you do have, as I said before, if you do have magnesium powder, definitely use that because you'll get way better results, and if you have some way to grind that up really fine, uh, the uh, boron oxide pieces, that's an excellent idea also. Um, it's actually quite difficult, it's like glass almost, and it's quite difficult to break up. Anyhow, I did look at prices of magnesium powder online, and it's really expensive compared to magnesium ribbon, so I just got the magnesium ribbon. Anyhow, so I'm going to go ahead and set this up outside in a little crucible or something, and we're going to set it off and see if we can get any boron. Uh, so I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I'm just going to light the reaction. As soon as the reaction is finished, I'm going to stick the lid on top so that the boron hopefully can't reoxidize. Okay, let's try this out. Okay, so that previous reaction didn't quite go as planned, and I would probably cut the clip short because it took quite a while. Now, um, I guess I didn't dehydrate the um, um, boron oxide enough, and it was still giving off water when I was heating it with magnesium, so the reaction was a lot slower because I had to push up, put off the water. Luckily, we had the excess, and I do believe still that some um, was produced, some pure boron. So I put everything in hydrochloric acid, and it bubbled extremely vigorously, but we're left with this blackish solution. Uh, so I'm just going to filter it off in this filter paper. Uh, so let's pour the mixture into here. And um, I'll meet you back and see what's in the filter paper once we're done pouring off this mixture. Okay, see you in a moment. Okay, so the process that I showed you is, uh, this is what we got in the end. This is our boron product. Now, I expected this one to be quite contaminated just because, um, it wasn't the best procedure that we did. <clears throat> so I redid the whole thing. And uh, this is much purer, I find. So I'm going to be showing you the two flame tests uh, to show the difference. So this one, the only difference was was that I made sure that the 
boron oxide was very, very dry and had no more water in it left, so the uh, thermite reaction would carry out properly. So anyhow, first, I just have a bit of it in this little flame test apparatus. Uh, so that's just a nichrome wire on the end, because nichrome wire has no flame color when put in a flame. So it's neutral, and then that's just a steel rod. So if I just turn up the blowtorch a bit, see if you can see the flame. Okay, so I put this into the flame. I you could I think you could yeah you could definitely see a bit of green in there, but not there. It's all gone, but definitely not huge amounts. So I'm gonna get a sample of the other one, and we'll see the difference in purity. Because the other one I did flame test and is a lot more pure because it's a lot more green. You can see hints of green, but there's definitely other contaminants. So be back once I prepare to sample the other one. Okay, so I have a flame test sample here of the other one, and let's see what this looks like. Oh, uh, we'll get right up there. Uh, yep, you could definitely see more green in this one. I think that this one looks definitely more green and is much more. Uh, pure. Although there still are some impurities, um, and more green does mean that it is more pure. Now, I did find out that for some reason my nichrome wire here, like if we go back up here, and if I just stick the nichrome part in, I uh, just wait. You can see, we get a weird. Um, I can't keep studying the flame and keep the camera up. Okay. You see, we get the uh, orange color for some reason from this nichrome wire. So I think we must have some sort of, I don't know what's wrong with the nichrome wire. But um, anyhow, this sample is clearly much more pure because you can see in the flame test that it is uh, much more green. So this, I'll keep it, but this is what I'll probably use for my element sample. Now obtaining pure boron this way is extremely difficult because there's almost always impurities. And this is not how it is produced ca um, uh, commercially. So perhaps in a future video I will um, explore different means of getting pure elemental boron, that, which is much more pure. Because I'm just assuming that this is probably about a 70-75% concentration. Um, do, do realize though that sodium compounds and stuff do add a lot of yellow to the flame. So you only need a teeny amount of sodium or something and it'll be very yellow. So this is probably more pure than more, uh, I'm thinking. Anyhow, hope you enjoyed. Okay, thanks. Bye.